you see my acrylic painting is now completely dried uh, my birds are still sitting in the tree where I left them and now it's time to move on to the oil stage of our painting I've got a small dish here and you can just about see that and that's some linseed oil and this is all water mixable paints I'm emphasizing that because you could do the same painting and you could just use regular oil paints as well I'm using water mixable they're readily available and the brush cleanup is nice and simple so I've got um, a one inch brush and I'm going to just take a small amount and this is kind of important that you don't flood the painting with lots and lots of oil you want it just wet enough so I've taken a small amount and I'm going to just scrub it in now I'm going to cover all of my canvas with a very thin coat of linseed oil and check your work get some light I've got a, a, a video light here and if I look across my canvas I can see where I've been and if I run my finger across my painting it doesn't leave any kind of a mark if I run my finger across and I can see like a track like a little speedboat went through there it's too much you'll just flood your canvas with oil and it'll be very tricky to paint on so I suggest when you've done this stage a few moments just to circle around your painting and look at it very very carefully and if it feels oily if it looks oily then there's a very simple way which is just to take a piece of paper towel and just lightly blot the surface to remove some of that that surplus oil you won't see very much on the paper towel but believe me it just takes off that that wetness that you don't need and again I'll check my canvas and that feels a little wet through there just blot it off you don't need to scrub it just blot that off and of course don't forget to give that brush a dry clean because that'll be full of oil as well and you'll only put it back on the canvas again and then you'll be back in problems so make sure you give your brush a jolly good wipe before you do the next stage now the exciting bits let's introduce you to the colors we're using very few colors for this painting but the color blends you get are just amazing we have some titanium white we have black we have crimson, bright red, and some cadmium yellow deep. Now, if you don't have these exact colors, don't worry too much. Instead of cadmium yellow deep, you can use Indian yellow. As long as it's a warm, rich yellow color, that's absolutely fine. You could use cadmium yellow, but that tends to be a little bit sort of pale and watery and a little bit on the cool side, but maybe that will suit your painting. I've used cad red light but bright red would work fine as well that's no problem crimson a nice warm crimson color black that's just straight black nothing special and titanium white so substitute whatever colors you have it is not hard and fast but try and pick pick some warm red colors in particular for this painting the one i'm doing is a quite warm color and if you pick cooler colors cad yellows and things your painting might look a little bit more sort of glass and a little bit more sort of cold looking but that may suit your particular painting now let's get started I've, I've dried my brush and the very first color I'm going to be used is a little bit of this cadmium yellow color sorry not cadmium yellow is it cadmium yellow <laughs> let me just check what I'm using here cadmium cadmium yellow deep that's the problem when you get just too many paints to play with okay, okay so you've got a small amount of that and, and if you think you've got too much again you can always dab some off on a paper towel and start out with just a few little brush strokes in the center here just judge how much you've got if it goes on and it looks really heavy and thick then you might want to just wipe your brush again and 
like magic. You can still see the trees and the birds. This yellow is a transparent colour. So you can paint right over your acrylic and it still shows through. And I'm going to just dance that in. One of the most important things you can do with your painting is to stand back occasionally so you can see how it's progressing. Now don't forget, whatever colour you're using in your background sky, there is water down here and the colour should be reflected. So take some of this colour and drop it down here in the water too. I may even put a little hint of that in the snow. And right now I'm just going to paint it so it looks a bit like a deck chair. That's okay. I don't really mind too much. If it looks a little streaky right now, we'll fix that. So just get kind of kind of loose with it, have some fun with it. Maybe just put a little hint of that through the snow. I'm not going to clean my brush, I'm going to go straight into some of the crimson colour. This is a very strong colour. And you need very little by comparison. I'm being very, very mean with it. I want to test it first before I go putting it all over my canvas. And this time I'm going to work right out in those corners. If it's too strong, I'd rather it be strong at the edges and corners rather than really strong in the middle of my painting. And this colour and the cadmium yellow colour underneath, they're good buddies. They like each other. And they make warm orangey colours. I'm going to be putting a, a little sunshine in the middle of it. My painting with my sky. So. One of the beauties of using oil paints is that they blend and they mix together and you can leave them alone or walk away and come back and, and you can carry on blending with them. It's an absolute joy to be able to work and come back and then work over again. Of course, I have this colour in the sky, so I have it, you guessed, down in the water too. I'm going to get a little bit more crimson. And I'm going to just blast away. And where they meet, I'm going to work them together. And don't be afraid to put some colour over here. If there's any little bits of white canvas peeking through, again it won't matter too much, we're going to be putting snow on this, so that'll work good. Now you can see here, I need to do a little bit of blending work here. 
I got some hard edges, so dry clean your brush. And you'll find that the, the sides of your brush are fairly smooth and the tips can be a little bit sharp. So use the sides of your brush and just the weight of the brush should be enough. I mean, if I hold that with my fingers and just drag it, you'll see that there is enough pressure there just to move that paint without leaving a brush mark. And I'm using the sides of the brush. And I go at it from a couple of different angles. And I want to make sure when I finish this that I don't have any really heavy brush marks in my sky. Not today. One important tip is that when you're going to be putting something like a setting sun into a scene, you want to make sure you've got sufficient colour here for the actual sun to show up. If your background colour is just too pale, putting a little sunshine in there, using the end of your finger, is going to be white or very light on top of something pale, and it just won't have that impact. So you've got to make sure you've got enough colour in here to actually make it show up. You can always test your painting. Here's my little, here's my little mock sunshine, and as you can see, that's pure white. It's a bit of paper towel, and you can see it really stands out. So I'm pretty sure my background sky has got enough colour in it. Oop. I'll get rid of that in a minute. The third colour for my sky is going to be some of this bright red colour. I haven't cleaned my brush. I'm going to go straight in with this colour. This colour, mixed in with these two, produces a warm, sort of cherry red colour. Absolutely lovely. Again, if you're not sure how much uh, paint you've got on your brush and you're worried about it, you can, you can put it on a, a piece of paper towel. You could even just drop a little down in the corners here. You can get the, the ground there with the water here, it can be much stronger. So that's a good place to just to drop some excess paint here. And I'm going to just Limit this more to the corners here, a little bit more of this cherry colour. This is a cadmium red deep, but if you've got just bright red, that will work lovely. The idea is we're going to want to try and create a little sort of a, almost like a, a sort of a circle here with the sunshine sitting in the middle of it. much down there. I'm going to just fix that. See my paintings are full of little oopsies and things that I do wrong and I don't mind you seeing all of those because that's how you learn. It's no good watching me paint a perfect picture every time and saying well that's okay for him. He never gets it wrong. He, he never makes a mistake. It's always perfect. Um, not so. Okay. Now don't lose some of the other colours you've got on here. This red colour, it wants to take over the world. Looks like I've got some more birds here. They look like they've flown down to the bottom of my canvas. Now uh, we'll fix those. Okay. Yeah, just a rub a little colour in here too. Not much. Not much. Well, I think we've got ourselves a really nice background for our painting. Nice and warm, lovely rich colours, perfect. I'm going to give my brush a bit of a clean and then I'm going to come back and we'll put the sun in the sky. <laughs> 